Let's go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Ida Vong. I am a sake specialist for Mutual Trading Company as well as Sake School of America. And <laughs> thank you for the <laughs> quiet applause. Um, and today we have our friends at Izumi Bashi teaching us the art of Kimoto. So just quick introductions and then um, our friends at Izumi Bashi will guide us through what we will be talking about today and what to expect. So very quickly, um, we have Toshio Ueno here with us today. He is the co-founder of Sake School of America. We also have Rachel Fikowski. I hope I said that right. <laughs> she is a Japanese beverage specialist at New York Mutual Trading. And we also have Sarah Guterbach, who is also a Japanese beverage specialist for New York Mutual Trading as well. Uh, and we also have our friends at Izumi Bashi. So we have President Hashiba, Yuichi Hashiba-san. So he's there. Um, it's always a treat to have the president with us or CEO or you know the head of the brewery with us. So thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to join us. And we also have Kayoko Abe-san, the beautiful lady in the kimono and happy. She is the brand ambassador for Izumi Bashi and she also has a very interesting title uh, that you will find out about in a moment. <laughs> so go ahead and take it away, Hashiba Shacho. Onegaishimasu. Okay, Yes, we can see everything perfectly. Okay, good evening, every, everybody. Uh, thank you for your joining with us. I'm grateful. I'm Hashiba, the sixth generation president of Izumiwa Shuzo in Kanagawa, Japan. Uh, today, I will talk about the following. Uh, one is about Izumibashi, and next about Kimoto with history, uh, the art of Kimoto, including sake pairing, and introduce Izumibashi sake. Okay. And uh, also, uh, here is uh, something important to tell you. I live in Japan and don't speak English every day. So when my English gets stuck, uh, Kayo san and uh, our team panelists will support me. Thank you. Hi hey everybody, thank you so much. Uh, Mr. Hashiba introduced um, the, the Izumi Bashi and my name is Kayoko Abe. I'm the brand ambassador of Izumi Bashi and also Izumi Bashi USA representative. And I'm based on the, the Washington DC and uh, I'm a sake pairingist. Maybe you, most people never heard that the pairingist. So I'm going to teach you or, you know, um, introduce the, the best pairing sake and uh, dishes. Thank you, Hashiba san. Thank you. Okay, and uh, this is uh, today's content. Uh, uh, we tell you uh, four contents. Next, and my brewery is located in Kanaga Prefecture, south of Tokyo. It's one of the closest breweries to the center of Tokyo one hour by train from Tokyo Station. When you visit Tokyo, I recommend that you also visit Izumibashi. This is a picture of Izumibashi and our life parties. The white buildings uh, in the middle is Izumibashi. The mountain on the right is a source of water used for brewing and farming. Izumibashi cultivate more than 114 acres of rice paddies, which is equivalent to 86 American football fields. We are the second largest rice farming group in Kanaga Prefecture. Uh, we, we have a uh, belief that great sake begins in the fields. Sake producer who begin with rice cultivation are very rare in Japan. To, product, to protect the environment and ensure safety, rice is grown without pest, pesticides or with fewer pesticides. The sake produced is 100% pure rice sake from made rice, cords and water. Next, uh, Izumibas is a meticulous sake brewery and has chosen challenging work purposefully uh, because we consider that it 
it would make good sake. Example, uh, including a uh, koji making with a uh, koji buta and a uh, uh, sake pressing with a uh, fune and the yamaoroshi process in the sake making process, which is the, pro which is the subject of today's story. Thank you, next. Uh, now let's talk about today's main topic, the shubo wa moto. This is East Sata you know very well. To begin with, the term moto refers to the process of cultivating a large amount of yeast that produce alcohol. The ingredients are rice, coal, and water. Uh, next, in Japan, as a rep representative, there are currently two types of yeast starter. The one is the one is uh, Kimoto K, Kimoto K Moto. Uh, K is two Japanese. It's a mean group. Uh, Kimoto K Moto, which uses lactic acid produced by natural lactic acid bacteria, and to ster sterilize other bacteria and cultiv cultivate yeast. Kimoto K is classified into two types. Kimoto with the Yamaoroshi process. On the other hand, Yamahai does not. Both take about four weeks to finish. The second is the Sokujo Moto, which involved adding lactic acid purchased outside of the brewery, sterilizing it and cultivating the yeast. A process takes only two weeks. Uh, the history of Kimoto is also the modern history of Japanese sake. Kimoto brewing, Kimoto brewing dates to the 1650s, 1650s or the 17th century. This was the Edo period, the samurai era. And uh, it's a difficult task to work with Yamaoroshi, but it was performed throughout Japan. During the Edo period, I heard that there are about 2,000 sake breweries. Later, uh, during the Meiji era, the Rika tax earned on sake was said to be as much as one third of the national tax. As a result, the Japanese government established the National Brewing Laboratory in 1904 to modern, modernize the sake industry. The National Brewing Laboratory was researching the Edo sake, Edo period Kimoto process. Yamaha was invented in 1909 and Sokujo Moto was invented in 1910, uh, which, seemed, which seems to have eliminated the need of Yamaoroshi work. Sorry, really quickly, can you explain what Mizukoji is? Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Mizukoji. This is Mizukoji. Okay. Uh, Nihongo de So, so. お米をその種が砂糖に分解するには、え、麹あの、酵素、エンザイムが必要なんですけど、え、木元の場合は山おろしをするので、麹のエンザイムがお米に作用します。で、水麹はお水の中に前もって麹を入れといて、酵素が水
Kimoto brewing process, about six minutes. You can see our wax that is not normally visible. For example, the first process is known as ikemeshi. Let's take a closer look, please. シュボタンと元屋を務めております高橋康弘と申しますよろしくお願いしますまず一日目なんですけど、えー、かけ米元かけっていうのを入れますねこれは、えー、蒸したまんまのお米のことです、えー、このお米元かけをですね、えー、と蒸し上がりは当然熱々ですから三十度ぐらいにですね、えー、手を入れてかまして冷ましますその後今度はですね大きなお団子状に固めた後に布でくるんでえー、水,分が水分が飛びにくいようにしてゆっくり冷ますってことをしますねこの工程を実はイケメシって言いますす朝方そうですね7時ごろに元影が蒸し上がるんですけどこの時熱々ですねでイケメシが終わるのが、えー、と泉橋の場合は2時3時ごろです。で3つえー、元麹元かけ、えー、水を、えー、混ぜ合わせて仕込むのが夕方になりますね。まんべんなくかき回して、全体のお米が。えー、均一にちょうどよくお水を吸ってくれるように、えー、かき混ぜに行きます、えー、このかき混ぜる作業のことは手元って言いますねで2日目になりますと山おろし元すりをするんですね泉橋は、えー、時間を分けて計3回元すりしていますなんですりつぶすかっていうとですねすりつぶしてやるとあの、まあ、ペースト状に近づきますから、えー、空気が少ない状態になりますそうすると空気がないと空気が好きな雑菌は、えー、と生えにくいですよね木元ですりつぶしてやる、えー、工程の意義はこの辺にあるかなと思いますね3日目4日目5日目は打たせっていう工程になりますね簡単に言うと何にもしない工程なんですこの最初1日目から5日目までですね泉橋ではずっと5度台をキープしてます打たせでずっと何もしないでおくとですね硝酸還元菌っていう細菌が、えー、と繁殖してくるんですねもともと水に少しだけいるものですで、えー、低温でしかも栄養が少なくても生えられるやつがこいつなんですねそうすると、この硝酸還元菌は亜硝酸という酸を出します。そうするとですね、これ酸ですから、えー、その酸によって、えー、雑菌とかがやっつけられるわけですね。えっ、ー、と、五日目過ぎるとですね、さっき紹介したダキダルで、えー、ダキを入れて甘くしていきます。そうすると、えー、脂肪の中がだんだん甘くなっていくんですね。温度もちょっとずつですが、上がっていきます。そうすると。環境が変化するんで、今度はね乳酸菌が嬉しい環境になってきて、乳酸菌が増え始めます。泉橋の場合は10日11名日目ぐらいで酵母添加をします。さっきお見せしたアンプルの清酒酵母を入れるんですね。酵母はですね、温度が温かい方がえっ、ー、と嬉しい生き物なので、酵母を入れた後はマットを巻いて、えー、やります。さらに、えー、とダキダルを入れて今度はくるくる回しながら入れてやるんですねそうするとですねダキを入れますから温まって甘くもなりますし、えー、酵母菌もどんどん増えていきますで酵母が増えてくると、あのー、主母の見た目も変わってきてブクブク泡立つようになるんであ酵母が増えたなって分かるようになるんです。
uh, okay. uh, how was the video? Uh, from here, uh, we will review the video. I will tell you a thrilling and mysterious story of, about the Kimoto process. Uh, this is wonder of Kimoto production. The vertical axis of the graph, a vertical axis of the graph is a bacteria population, and the horizontal axis is the number of days. The main, the purple line, uh, this is wild yeast and unwanted bacteria population. Pass nitrate, nitrate reduce bacteria, and next uh, lactic acid bacteria will kill wild yeast and other bacteria. Following that, third, the yeast produce alcohol safety. The number of yeast increase and the Kimoto process is complete. We are surprised that sake was made in the old days like a Edo period. When there was no electricity, gas, uh, some metals were inspection machines. That is in the danger of contamination. Behind this, behind this fact was a flowing. One is a double sterilization. One is nitrate reducing bacteria and the other is lactic acid bacteria. If we think about it normally, contamination will occur naturally, but we are surprised at the, at the fact that thanks to these two bacteria, sake was made safety. And the another, the another is that in the world of the lactic acid, where other bacteria cannot live, but only yeast can, but only yeast that makes alcohol can live. In other words, it gives us sake. I think uh, this is a gift from God and an amazing thing. Moreover, because the Japanese at, that, at this time did not have the concept of yeast or bacteria, they had a complete work manual only. A double sterilization, it's very difficult pronunciation. And only yeast can survive and produce alcohol in lactic acid. Uh, this is very uh, important thing, I think. Uh, and next, uh, I also think about the following. During the Edo period, the culture of food and alcohol flourished. People lived what is known today as a sustainable lifestyles, carefully cultivating things and enjoying food and drink. There were no addit additives, pesticide or pesticides. They valued nature's activities. Kimoto sake was formed as a result of this process and it's still paired with food to this, to this day. From here, I will replace Kayo-san, uh, a partner with the university in the United States. Thank you. So that uh, Izumibashi has a company restaurant called Kuramoto Kako and uh, about five years ago. And it's a very rare that uh, Sake Brewery has a uh, own company restaurant and uh, they are located in the Ebina train station about uh, one hour train ride from center of Tokyo. And uh, Kuramoto Kako offers uh, omakase course with uh, experiencing a pairing and sake food. And uh, they primarily use local vegetables and ingredients in Kanagawa. And I'm gonna show you the video about uh, the Kuramoto Kako surroundings in front of the the lesson.
this is a leader of Junmai Daigin Jogras. So the next one is, I'm going to briefly explain about the pairings. As Mr. Hashiba explained that uh, Himoto sake is a very good for the pairing sake. And uh, at Izumibashi, we um, brew only two kind of uh, um, moto. One is Sokujo and the other one is Kimoto. And usually that the uh, Sokujo moto is clean, clear, refreshing palate. And uh, it's good match with the pottery and the pork dishes, white fish and the selfish, and salt, broth, and the vinegar-based vinegar dishes, and the fresh and the or low dishes. So simply it's like a clear and light dishes will match with the Sokujo moto. And the other one is Kimoto. And those palette is uh, generally, you know, complex flavor and wide range of flavors and depths. And so it's good with like red meat and soy sauce and uh, miso and spicy uh, spices, such as like sancho, Japanese pepper. So like here is a mabo dofu, it's a Chinese uh, tofu dishes using a lot of uh, sancho, Chinese sancho um, peppers and uh, the kind of, you know, that the uh, pairings we are um, suggesting. And then we're gonna explain about our hue, you know, signature bottle in United States. One is, uh, we nicknamed the, this bottle called gold, gold bottle, and dragonfly kimoto, the meeting, Percentage is 35, so we we nicknamed that the 35 and Junmai Daiginjo. And this one is using Lakufu Mai Sake Rice. Lakufu Mai Sake Rice is a quite new sake rice. And the Izumibashi is a first official grower in Japan, registered, and uh, they are using a Lakufu Mai. Lakufu Mai is uh, the uh, crossbreed with a uh, Ohyaku Mangoku and uh, Dontoko uh, don't Mai is a uh, table rice. So it's very clean. And uh, worst that the, the aroma is a very um, uh, quiet. And what, but once you drink it and you can tell the acidity, umami and sweetness and uh, the characteristic of the Lakufu Mai, and uh, after that, you know, the uh, after nozzle, the little nozzle will stay a long time. So we suggested with a melon and the prosciutto ham and the appetizers. And next one, or you know, for the, the, some the, the other dishes, um, sushi, sushi, the vinegar rice is gonna be good or ceviche from the, the Peru, or like the from Spain, like the uh, uh, seafood uh, ajillo, like uh, the olive oil, garlic, uh, the, the marinated stuff. That kind of will be a good match with this bottle. And the next one is we call black. And uh, it's a black dragonfly and junmai and kimoto and uh, they are two year aged. Uh, yesterday, Mr. Hashiba just started tasting that at the brewery, um, the 2019, the, the sake, and they store in a cool temperature for two years and uh, then bottled. And recently they got uh, gold at the San Francisco International Wine Competition and our signature bottle and made by Kimoto. And this one is uh, using uh, Yamada Nishiki sake rice. And this one, when I taste the first time, 
this one is so unique taste. And uh, I catch like, you know, as a Japanese, there's a very famous like um, pro, um, probiotic drink called Yakult. So I feel, you know, Korea Yakult and a little sweetness and uh, acidity and uh, nice flavor. And uh, also that uh, little nose after the, you know, that uh, you, you drink that uh, um, this black bottle and have a present and clean acidity. And uh, it's like laps up all your mouth. And also once you warm up this sake, because Kimoto sake is a very good for Okan, that warm up sake. And there are different kind of that, uh, the temperature you can um, enjoy. And uh, even that uh, low temperature will bring that the many, you know, that uh, sweetness and umami forward. And so pair with like red meat, this is uh, the tuna, red meat. And uh, also they are good with like a you know, cheeseburger as Sala mentioned that and uh, maybe pizza or a Philly's cheese, uh, cheese steak. Or, you know, sometimes that I do the French baguette then with a uh, camembert cheese. And uh, it's also great because th this one has a milky taste and very good with, uh, you know, pair with any kind of like a cheesy taste even that the uh, blue, blue cheese will be a good match. And the uh, next one is called yellow. And uh, this one also using the Lakufumai Junmai Ginjo. And uh, they are very you know, unique because of the Lakufumai. You can catch the, the acidity and a very gentle sense of the uh, sweetness and uh, slightly sharp bitterness, like spice, and uh, recommended to serve that, uh, you know, drink slightly cold or room temperature. And uh, they have, uh, um, it's good with uh, some, the, the, um, what's that? the shrimp cocktails or like uh, the, uh, the uh, shellfish pasta, or the crumb chowder because you know will match the balance with that uh, acidity. The next one I really love this one that the Junmai Daiginjo Umeshu from from sake, and this one recently got double gold and ninety seven. Um, point at the uh, San Francisco International Wine Competition. And this one is sweet because of that, uh, you know, they have the Umeshu and uh, they, their name is Yamada Juro because uh, we use Yamada Nishiki for the sake rice for the uh, Jumai Daginjo. And Juro is the uh, local plum in Kanagawa in the uh, Odawara city called Juro Ume. So they use it, so we combine that uh, Yamada Juro. And they are very good with the dessert. And, but, you know, sometimes I use for the, like, you know, we call jibie. It's like uh, the, the wild, uh, you know, animals, like uh, lamb or uh, boar and uh, the duck. And uh, it, they, they, they will be a good match with even the main dish. And you can warm up the, this bottle or you can put the, some ice and you can play with this, you know, it, with any kind of temperature. Even you can put that uh, mix with the crab soda and make like, you know, soda drink will be nice because the ume has a very good the aroma and relaxing, you know, before bedtime will be a nice, you know, that the friend bottle. Okay, so this one um, is the, the last things. We have the, some that the social media and uh, if you have any question, please let us know and please uh, the follow that the uh, Instagram, we have the US the, the account. And uh, so 
Ida san, I think that the I finished a little bit early, but I, I, I assume there are a bunch of the questions. I mean, oh. I'm pretty sure <laughs> the panelists have a lot of questions too. Um, so there's actually a couple great ones here. Sure. Uh, just a very quick one. Um, what is the Izumibashi Kurotombo aged in? The two years, I know. Yes. Can you, uh, for the Kurotombo, yeah. is it aged in stainless steel tanks? Oh, or どういうふうに2年間保存してますかあ、はい、えっと、低温で2年間。サマルタンクです。サマルタンク2年間。フォーダタフォー2イヤーズでストアダタウィズユージングダタテンパチャーコントロールコーサーモータンク。うん。エン
uh, uh, when we compare the sake uh, of Kimoto and Yamaha, uh, Kimoto is very uh, more clear and good uh, complex taste than Yamaha. Uh, uh, we think why uh, Kimoto is clear, more clear than Yamaha. Uh, because uh, Kimoto making process has a uh, uh, ikemeshi and uh, yamaoroshi, the, and uh, easy to keep temperature. Okay, and uh, but Yamaha don't don't have yamaoroshi and the ikemeshi, and very uh, easy to work, but uh, not so. Um, Oh. So the Kimoto has a very good, you know, they, they have to follow the precise the temperature control than the Yamaha, then, but the, the result is going to, you know, have a better quality than the, the Shubo, the Sake. So they, they eliminate that the Yamaha, you know, sake brewing, only Kimoto. Okay, yeah, focus on what you guys do best and what comes out greater, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he's saying that even though the Kimoto process is a lot more difficult in some ways, the, ultimately the result is so much better. Um, there's other things that are more difficult to control in some ways in the Yamaha. Um, and so maybe the results aren't always as precise. Uh, so I think he's using the term um, clear, but I think there's, a, in, maybe in English, there's an idea of um, precision um, in that, if that makes sense. Right, right, right. That the yeah, precision, yeah, that the temperature control, yeah, they, they have to um, do that, yeah. Um, Gordon has a really great question because um, I know you guys do work with a couple people, but does Hashiba-san have research partners such as a university or Kanagawa government? What kind of the research he's look, uh, looking for the, the sake making or yeah, uh, well, I think nice uh, farming. Or I think both. Yeah, so, I think both. I know, she, uh, and Izumi was no who are Dareka, Patona, take it to you, Katari, Naruto, Yuka, Ishoni, Kenk, Stai, Toka, Sake, Sake, Bumonto, and Okome Bumon, the Naka, and Irasha Maska. Boy, uh, very nice question. Eh, <laughs> 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 in making sake and in making rice, eh, we collaborate with Kanaga Prefecture and Kanaga Prefecture of Technical Institute and uh, the Agriculture uh, Institutes. And uh, in agriculture, uh, uh, we use a drone, drone, uh, drone for uh, uh, agriculture, uh, like rice making. And then uh, drone has a multi-spectral camera a multi spectral camera is uh, a can not again, what can what analyze, the analyze, speed, analyze, analyze and, but uh, so that the, the drone has uh, that several different kind of that uh, the camera on it and one is a low um, the hidden that the camera is like uh, analyze and shoot that the screen and uh, light field and uh, they analyze the uh, protein level and the moisture level, even that the another one is in the summer, they can, you know, that the uh, analyze uh, growing that the light plant. And uh, if the color is uh, really dark green, meaning, you know, they are um, doing great, but uh, there is uh, like a yellow color and meaning need more, you know, the work, like, you know, fertilization or need more support to grow. And even that uh, um, there is a different, you know, that the uh, timing and they collect all data compared with the actual crop. And uh, so they can, you know, see that how the lice grow in uh, each lice body. 
and they are like collaborate with the university and the, the Kanagawa Technology Institute with yes. that. Yeah, so um, I don't know if it's on the English part of the uh, Izumibashi website, but it is in the Japanese part. Mm -hmm. So they do partner with the Sagami um, Sake Rice study oh, yeah. group, mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah. Sa Sagami uh, Sakamai Kenkyu Kai. Mm -hmm. um, they also work with Kanagawa Prefectural Agricultural Technology Center mm -hmm. and um, a couple other groups as well, I think. But yeah, they do have research partners in a sense. Yeah, all right. Um, this, do you make any kyoke sake? Uh, kyoke? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, it's no, the first no, time no. I've heard of this. No. Kidaru? I think it means it means the large oak or not oak, sorry, large uh, usually um, cedar um, tanks, like the wooden wooden tanks um, for make uh, for making the sake inside. So there are some breweries that prefer to use the large wooden tank. Um, so they're asking about that, or if maybe if you make also taruzake at all. どちらでもどうぞ。いや、今シーズンあの、木だれを置く場所がなくて、今シーズン今あの、クラウナを押して置く場所を今作ってます。So <笑> like this you know that the uh, this season they 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 are doing that renovation at the brewery. So there's no space to store that kidaru. But uh, he is planning to make a space for the kidaru for next season. I heard like, that they're massively expensive. Um, do you have an idea of how much it would cost to put kidaru a kidaru in the brewery? <laughs> it's, yeah. It's <laughs> The secret. Well, he can't. Secret. He, he yeah. yeah. He can't expose uh, yeah. the expenses at Izumibashi. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, but that's great. I feel like he's exposed a different secret that they're going to have have that. So that's really cool. Um, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, <laughs> Um, I just want to clear something up because Minako-san in the comments is, I think maybe there's a misunderstanding here. So as she understands, it's a trade-off to keep maintaining the quality of the sake and between the simplification of the sake brewing process. Yamaha has an advantage of the brewing process, whereas Kimoto requires more strict temperature, temperature control. Izumibashi chose Kimoto because Izumibashi chose Kimoto, which is more difficult to brew. Is this correct? I, I don't think that's what exactly what we were getting at. Um, there, there is a trade-off. Yamaha is a little bit easier in the fact that you don't need to do this whole ore mashing process and everything. Um, but for Izumibashi... Yeah, 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 so Yamaha doesn't, you don't have to control the temperature so much. So it's not less work. Kimoto, you have to check it, but you can do, uh, you can control the temperature precisely as uh, uh, Asera mentioned. So that's the biggest difference. And, you know, in the Yamaha world, you are not supposed to, there is this old saying that uh, if you're making Yamaha, don't touch the mash, let the, let the mash do its own, uh, its own thing, meaning, you know, a conversion of, uh, the starch to uh, sugar by a natural uh, enzyme. Thank you, Anosan. Yeah, he can explain it much more clean than I can. Um, and Izumibashi chose Kimoto, which is more difficult to brew. So in a sense, it is more difficult to brew, but I think yeah, they I, have it I, down. Actually, that the Izumibashi, you know, they uh, choose to the more meticulous job, like, yeah. you know, he explained uh, about the, the farming also take more time. And also mm -hmm. they have our own grinding machine, which is very rare. And also they choose to use a hempese, my flat shaped uh, rice polishing technique, also takes more time. 
And also they use uh, the pressing method is a Funa Shibori. And uh, it will take uh, almost uh, one day compared to the machine pressing like three hours. So that kind of stuff, they are uh, choose to have a more um, meticulous you know, method. Uh, even that the koji making, they use a small shell, you know, that the lid style, you know, uh, koji futa, and which is a very, very layer. And uh, usually the most brewery using for the competition sake because it takes more time, but they can have a very good fragrant the koji. That kind of stuff, you know, I don't know why that the Izumibashi choose it, but uh, was that uh, when I was, I'm observing them, they are enjoying like spending more, you know, that the technique and more time to do so. Yeah, so I was definitely gonna bring that up. Um, <laughs> basically a lot of the processes that Izumibashi chooses to do mm -hmm. are very small batch in a way. And meticulous is a great word, Sarah, I agree. Mm -hmm. um, you know, doing smaller batches and like doing these kind of things really kind of highlights the quality of the sake in the end, I believe. Um, on the topic of Kimoto, as this is the art of Kimoto, I noticed that there was no singing when they were doing Moto City, when they were uh, using the ore mashing process. Um, is there a reason why? Uh, Okay. Uh, yeah, I think at, uh, in Yamaoroshi, in Yamaoroshi working, uh, time is timing is important for us. Uh, when we do Yamaoroshi with our customers, uh, we use music uh, like uh, Matsuda Seiko. <laughs> but, uh, but now, uh, we are now using a stopwatch. Uh, the reason why uh, we didn't sing a song was the dialect of dialect of sake brewing. Uh, dialect song is very difficult. My company was a Nambutoji, but Nambutoji dialect is uh, difficult for us. And the sake degree uh, song is a uh, um, maybe direct song, direct song. That's the dialect. The, the dialect. dialect was difficult. So um, it would be sort of like me singing in a southern accent. Totally impossible. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, it's not just the accent. It's like the words they use are kind of different. So it's like speaking another language. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah, because I, I wanted know, to I, oh, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Eat a song, please. Oh, no, I just on the topic because, you know, I know a lot of breweries tend to use the songs to keep the time as well as the rhythm. So it was nice to find out why you guys didn't do that. Um, and you, I believe you also told us earlier that you guys can tell just by the texture and the appearance and the condition of uh, the, the kimoto. あの、キモトの、あの、歌歌ってなくても、あの、感覚でペースト状のその感覚が分かります。分かります。so the Krabito, they can feel that, you know, after several times that, that they, they do that the three times and uh, Yamaroshi. And uh, so they start uh, kind of feeling that uh, from the experience that uh, Yamaroshi is completed. I think maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I think also with the songs um, and the time that in the Edo period, uh, the rice was never polished nearly as much as it is now. So usually the rice was still um, in a larger size. Um, and so they had to do Yamaroshi for a longer period of time each time. And so they would kind of keep themselves going by singing the songs. Uh, and this process at that time also helped with the um, sacrification 
because uh, it helped to um, spread the molecules and the starches out um, further so that the um, enzyme reaction uh, worked a little better. Now that the rice is polished down so much more and they're smaller, they don't have to do it quite as long. Uh, so there, I think uh, Hashiko-san was saying that you could use even a stopwatch and start to a certain extent to be careful not to overdo it. So I thought that was really interesting. So we're coming up um, to about an hour mark here. There's still a couple more questions that the panelists would like to discuss, and then we will wrap things up. So maybe another 10 minutes or so, if you guys want to stick around, we have some really great questions. Um, let's start with Sarah. You wanted to ask about some key mobile trends? Yeah, so um, I've always been uh, fascinated by, uh, you know, trends around the world and, uh, you know, I definitely have heard a lot of sommeliers in the United States talking about their interest in Kimoto sake um, and a lot of, uh, you know, sort of very well educated buyers in the United States are very interested in Kimoto sake. But I'm interested in what are the trends in Japan for this because when often when I go to sake bars in Japan, I'll ask the people you know, who run them, what kinds of words do most consumers in Japan understand about sake? And they usually say that many people understand junmai or they understand tanre karakuchi, you know, but maybe they don't always understand what is kimoto or yamahai or any of these other words. And so I'm interested in uh, how that this category is growing uh, in Japan and how are, they, how are you marketing this idea in Japan. Okay, Mishtako. あの、あと、日本、日本でその木本の酒っていうのが今人気がどういうふうになってるんでしょうか。えっと、日本語でいいですか。どうぞ。えっと、まず、えっと、その全体的なトレンドとしては、えっと、木本をやらない酒蔵がなく
professionals like importers or distributor might maybe not have the uh, the tons of the, the information about the Sokujo um, Kimoto and the Yamahai because uh, the producers like you know Izumibashi or other brewery is not you know define that uh, the difference between the the, so, uh, the Kimoto or Yamahai and uh, was not feeding that uh, enough information from the producers. So like, you know, he's uh, the cross, like, you know, the customer who all uh, line up the Kimoto sake and they, they know about the, the Kimoto and uh, then he, 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 Mr. Hashiba invited the brewery and do the, the Kimoto making with him. All right. And um, Sarah has a question regarding rice and the Kimoto process. Oh, sorry, Rachel. Oh, <laughs> lost my mind today. Sorry. Um, same person. <laughs> You know, um, I, I noticed, of course, that you make or presented two beautiful Kimoto products today. One, Junmai, age two years, Kimoto made with Yamada Nishiki, and one, Junmai Daiginjo Kimoto made with this, um, this early harvest, Rakufumai. Um, are there any differences in the brewing process and the Kimoto Yama Oroshi process in the treatment of these two rices? Or, or do some Yamada Nishiki perhaps like liquefy easier or Rakufumai needs a little more polish to do the Yama Oroshi process. Um, can you tell us about that? あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あの、あ
お米の水の吸わせ方も違うし。いろいろすごい違います。そうだ、ウォーターサクションだった、you know, at the beginning だった、with ikemashi, the, from the process, you know, they can tell the difference. That's, that's incredible. That's really interesting. Yeah. 楽譜前の方がお米を吸いやすい。あ、じゃ山田錦の方がお米を吸いやすい。水を吸いやすいんです。そうだ、山田錦 is a more, you know, the quick. That, uh, absorbing? Think, yeah, absorbing、mm -hmm. that、uh, water. Yeah.、Mm -hmm. All right. So let's see.、Uh, I'm going to end with the final question. And Ueno san is going to、uh, just clarify a little bit more about、um, the question from the beginning、uh, about the Mizukoji. But before we do that, Hashiba Shacho, do you have any upcoming projects or collaborations? And what's your favorite sake that you make? あの今あの計画将来の計画で何かありますかとあとはなんかコラボレーションとかありますかとあと何かあの好きなお酒はどういうタイプでしょうか難しいです。えっと,<笑>話せるとす先の話はえっとそうですねあの今うちでもあの結構たくさんのえっと大銀行 OK。Now, my company、uh, reserve、uh, a lot of Jumai Dai Ginjo, Rakfumai or Yamada Nishikyo or Omachi. And、uh, my company now is thinking、uh, to make a brand sake, a brand Yamada Nishikyo or Rakfumai or Omachi, and、uh, not fresh sake, and、uh, three, or, three or four or five years aged sake. のブレンドをの新しいシリーズを、ニューシリーズ、えー、ウィスキー。So that's, that's really exciting and I'm, I'm interested to see the results. ブランドネームも決まってますて<笑>言わないけど。Uh, so, so, yeah, he, he already mind that the, the name of the, the lineup. But he can't tell send us. you my home address. <laughs> All right, so great. We heard some really awesome news.、Um, I do want to know though, what is his favorite Izumibashi sake? Izumibashi no sake no naka de Shacho no ano ano okini ira dore de shu. It's difficult. But <laughs> my ban,、uh, every, every, night, every night, I want to drink hot sake of black dragonfly. <laughs> Huh? All right. So he can't pick his favorite child, but、uh, there's one that he spends the most time with. <laughs>、uh, yeah, Black Dragon Fry. Yeah. Kanzake. Kanzake. Don't know why I'm not on the number of the number of the number of the number All right. So, yeah, he has a、uh, black dragonfly at night、uh, warmed up.、Uh, so, lastly,、um, Ueno san, can you clarify the musicology for us? Yeah, sure.、Uh, I just want to ask him, too, the question. You know,、uh, musicology is coming from, I think, Mizumoto, and there's two types. One is uh, using uh, non steam rice and steam rice and water and let it sit. And the other one is the one that the s e r a mentioned about koji and water. Isimila, Shacho, do you think that's the same thing? I don't know. 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 いいですかあの山を山おろしの代わりに山灰を作るときにやるやり方 ?How to make 山灰、えー、not 山おろし。Okay? First step is、uh, we, we, prepare, uh, la, あの we prepare water.、Okay? water. And the next is、uh, put into the water a koji.、Okay? The koji、uh, in, the, in the water,、uh, koji release、uh, enzyme. Okay? The, we can get 
工事ウォーター。OK? 工事ウォーター。工事が溶け出す、水の中に。で、after two or three hours, after two or three hours,、uh, steamed rice, we steamed rice, steam rice, and they put into the tank steam rice. OK? と、ステ e ムライス、えー、スーって何て言うんだろうアブソープ、yes. Yes. ステ e ムライスが、<笑>えっと、エンザイムを吸うので、そこであの分解が始まる。だから山下ろししなくても、えっ、ー、と、先に麹水、麹ウォーターを作っといて、そこに虫歯を入れれば、えー、と自然に分解が始まるのが水麹という方法です。だから、元すりしなくても大丈夫。オーシャルやってるのはどっちですかうちはあのうちはだからえっ、ー、と何て言うんだろうあの山元す元すりやってる元すり元すりをやってるんです山下ろしをやってる、えー、はい、はい、山灰はやってないはい but that was all in Japanese can we get that in English for everybody else oh so That you mentioned that the first of all, you have a koji in a tank with water, and then you、uh, let it sit and let the、uh, koji enzyme、uh, released into the water. So you have a lot of koji、uh, enzymes in the water, and then you put the steam rice. That's the mizukoji. And you don't have to do yama, yama oroshi, which is you know, a, 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 using a puddling、uh, puddle to mix the rice. And for his, his himoto,、uh, he's doing yama oroshi instead of. Yeah. Yes, which, <laughs> which takes more time and more labor. So, Mizukoji is for the, the yama high process. And、uh, that the Yama Oroshi is a Kimoto, we call. So, like, you know, Kimoto K, they have that the Kimoto and the Yama Hai under the Kimoto K. And、uh, the Yama Hai has、uh, the Mizukoji. And、uh, Kimoto has the Yama Oroshi process, which is,、uh, you know, grinding machine that the、uh, rice and、uh, steam rice and、uh, the koji and mix with that、uh, from the Ikemeshi. Perfect. Thank you guys for clarifying that.、Um, very beautifully done. <laughs>、um, so, we're now at 6 15 on the West Coast. So, we're going to wrap it up here by saying our final words and thank yous.、Uh, there was quite the、uh, great Mizukoji question of 2022. <laughs> Um, but thank you, <laughs> thank you to our friends at Izumi Bashi for joining us, as well as our、uh, Japanese beverage specialists at New York Mutual Trading and Ueno san, as always. Thank you,、uh, Shacho, Hashiro Shacho. I appreciate it. And you know, I knew, I knew you can, I, I, I persuaded him to this, do this webinar first time he did it because.、Uh, I visited him,、uh, his brewery,、uh, three years ago, maybe. And、uh, I, I was you know, listening to his presentation. I said, he can do this. <laughs> thank、And、you. He's doing it. Do I, 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 thank you so much for doing this. And also, the people who came to this、uh, seminar,、uh, we appreciate it.、Um, would anybody else like to say some final words? Thank you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> can, can I just say that、uh, as a like, US representative? So that、uh, now that, yes,、uh, that、uh, Izumi Bashi, the sake bottle, you, know, you can purchase all over the US, like you know, New York, Seattle,、um, uh, Oregon, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Hawaii, and、uh, um, New York, and、uh, Philadelphia, and、uh, of course, the, the DC. <laughs> And、uh, so we are expanding the, the sales area. And if you need、uh, that、uh, Izumi Basake, just let、um, the mutual trading to know about it. And we are going to、yeah, visit you, or we are going to say hello yeah, from DC or from Japan. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, that totally slipped my mind. Of course, everybody wants to know where they can get Izumi Bashi.、Um, yeah. In the follow up email, I'll have a list,、um, including the ones Abe san you wanted to highlight.、Mm -hmm. And、um, there is somebody who does ship to all 50 states on that list, but they, depending on your state, it might have to go through a third party shipping、right. service and that could、right. cost more.、Right. Um, 
And as always, if you don't have it in your area, make sure to request it at your local retailers and restaurants so they know that there's a demand for it. Um, I've also linked our other webinar with Izumi Bashi Brewery on sustainability and modern agriculture. That'll also be in the follow-up email in case you missed that in the chat. And thank you guys again so much for joining us. Um, and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Hi, it's Ida with Sake School of America. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give us a thumbs up or we will hold your sake hostage. This is evidence. If you want to see more content from us, be sure to hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you get the latest updates when we upload our videos. And if you want to let us know what to cover next or if you have something nice to say, be sure to leave it in the comments down below. And if you want to see more from our Brewery Spotlight series, be sure to check out the playlist. We'll see you next time.